Oh, good morning to you. Good cold morning to you. It's about minus one degree Celsius. Although here inside our gazebo, it's actually quite a bit warmer thanks to the propane fire pit and the coffee that we've got going. You got Mabel in her sweater here and relaxing on Emily's chair while Emily relaxes on my chair. I guess I stand. We've got a fun little bit of exploration lined up for you today. We're going to be checking out an old alignment of the Trans-Canada Highway. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit more later, but first I'll kind of give you a quick rundown of where we are. So we're at Johnston Canyon Campground here in Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. Look at our site here, site number 99. Johnston Canyon is a great campground if you have a small rig and don't need any hookups because the sites are fairly small and like I said there are no hookups so you've got to be completely self-contained but it's a far nicer camping experience than a place like Tunnel Mountain that's essentially a giant parking lot. We just wrapped up our first night here. We're here for a total of four nights. We got three different adventures planned. Each one will be its own individual video. So hopefully you'll stick around and check those out with us as they get released. Well, we've had a little change of plans. We're still gonna try for the same goal or end destination, but we're gonna try and get there in a different manner. And here's why. That parking area you see just to the left of this curve is the trailhead that I wanted to park at to take uh, the old alignment of the Trans-Canada Highway. But for some reason, they've got it blocked off with no access for some reason. So our only option would have been to try and park up at the lake and pay for parking there and then hike down to the trailhead which just seems really stupid because the lake parking lot is packed and solid and full in fact they've got signs going back kilometers on the trans canada highway saying there's no lake access don't even try so i don't know why that parking lot is closed unless they just did that to avoid people trying to not pay for parking like people would park there and walk up to the lake maybe i don't know but we're gonna try approaching it from the different end which is significantly shorter and doesn't provide nearly as much good opportunity to explore the old trans canada highway which was what the goal was but well plan b just getting organized here at the quote unquote trailhead. So what we have done is we have come further down the Trans-Canada Highway to the west. We've crossed into British Columbia and we're now at this little siding here at a place that I believe is marked as Stephen or Stephen on the uh, on the map. Not really anything here. It was probably like a water tower back in the steam era or something the name probably means something to the rail fans but it's just a nice convenient place here so we got a nice spot here for train tracks so if a train comes by we'll have a good view of it and basically we're kind of just along the lake o'hara road here and as you can see it's just us this other little car just showed up. She's doing some mountain biking. This road is very popular with the biking crowd as well because being a former alignment of the Trans-Canada, it's all paved. So this is going to be a lot shorter of a route in than what I was initially planning, but that's okay. So it's hard to believe that the Trans-Canada Highway used to have level rail crossings like this where cars would have come to a complete stop for trains, but that's how it was back in the earlier days of travel. 
So speaking of the early days of travel, what I was able to discern online is that basically this section of the Trans-Canada Highway was initially put into place in 1926. And this particular stretch of road was part of the Trans-Canada right up until 1962 when the highway was realigned over to my left. So that basically left this as a section of Highway 1A. And I asked online in some of the Calgary hiking groups, since this is now apparently part of the Great Divide Trail, and I was told that this section of road was still open to vehicular traffic right up until 1999. That 1999 date pretty much jives with my memory of it. I have a picture I took of me with my car, uh, which was a 1994 Pontiac Sunbird, taken at a spot up here along the uh, along the highway and I know exactly which spot it is because there's a very notable landmark there and even though the highway has been closed for 25 years now that landmark is still there so we'll take a look at that when we get to the far end well now it's not the far end it's the close end <laughs> I can hear a train the tracks are just off to our left here can't see it through the trees yet but there should be a good, if memory serves, a good spot to see trains when we get to our destination here. You can just see the train through the trees there. Canadian Pacific Engine 8, 8, 8 3, 3 for those keeping score at home. I guess technically CPKC now. There's a second unit in behind it. Number 86, 8623. And it makes sense that the tracks would be right here. I mean, after all, the railway came through here in the early 1880s. So it makes sense that the road builders that came along, you know, 40 years later would take advantage of all that surveying and construction that had taken place for the railways and build the roads essentially paralleling the tracks. So we had a little excitement at the beginning of the trailhead. We had just passed through the gate. We're beginning to walk down the nice road. And I looked down the trail and I was Sorry, Mabel's going crazy. Um, could be related to what I'm about to tell you. Uh, I looked down there, I was like, oh great. Someone has an off-leash dog. And uh, Mabel doesn't do well with off-leash dogs. And I was like, eh, maybe it's a coyote. And then I was like, no, it's too big for a coyote. And it was really dark. I'm like, I think that's a wolf. So I got kind of nervous. And Dan's like, no, no, it already scampered off. We'll be fine. We have bear spray. That'll work on wolves too. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we got past the point in the trail where the wolf was and we're fine. Probably not the best video because I'm shooting straight into the sun, but thanks to the miracles of logging, we actually get a bit of a nice view of the mountains right here. So we were just saying, being a national park, maybe this isn't the result of logging, but maybe this was part of a prescribed burn at one point. Not sure. If you know, tell us in the comments. So for having been abandoned for 25 years, the roadway is in remarkably good condition. Um, like, you can still see the yellow paint down the middle here that separated the lanes. There's a little bit of 
nature starting to reclaim the road by encroaching on the sides here making the the lanes seem a little narrower than they actually were and we got a really nice little spot here this lake down in front mountains in the background the current trans canada highway there right above the train tracks here's a pretty good section where tree roots and plant life are causing some upheaval in the pavement anyway going back to the wolf story you know emily said well what do we do if the wolf approaches us and i said i'm pretty sure we're forced to dance with it something there for the kevin costner fans yeah this stretch here definitely being overgrown and taken over by the plant life and trees here so it's been a gentle but steady uphill climb and that makes sense since we are approaching the great divide here the great divide being that stretch through the North American continent where water on one side flows to the east and out to the Atlantic Ocean and the water on the other side flows to the west out to the Pacific and uh, yeah this road goes right up and over the Great Divide and so it's pretty much going to be a steady uphill all the way till we get to our destination but that should mean it's downhill on the way back should be no guarantees interesting little structure here in the middle of what would have been the eastbound lane at one time looks like almost a couple of old railway ties not sure what's that doing in the middle of the highway unless it was some kind of a temporary fix for this little sinkhole that was developing there perhaps not sure again if you know educate me and speaking of the water that's working its way west to the Pacific here's a nice little creek right off the side of the highway and as we walk past the spot like that with uh, you know on an abandoned road alignment I can't help but wonder how many people back in the 20s 30s 40s 50s had to stop alongside of the road there and refill their radiators because they were boiling over coming up this incline up to uh, the top of the pass here I believe according to the map this is kicking horse pass but don't quote me on that because I haven't looked at the map for a few days old sign here see if it still says anything oh yes trailhead marker for Ross Lake I've never hiked up there I don't know if you can still I looked like there was a trail that went up to where the new highway is so you could probably still hike it from the new highway but yeah not much of a pull out here back when this road was constructed if you wanted to park to hike up to Ross Lake
we couldn't have found a better place to be was that train came by nice view of the tracks there across the water and another old road sign here all vehicles proceeding on this road require a valid national park vehicle permit the funny thing is if they took those barricades down this road is still 100 percent drivable if you needed to do so i mean as emily just said off camera you know there's provincial highways in saskatchewan that are in worse condition than this so shout out to my dad. Hi dad, if you're watching. Every time I see these signs, I always think he would always stop and have to walk, just like the guy on the sign. Now I really hope when I get home to the computer, I can dig up that old photo of me in my car at this spot, because this is when we came here to see. We've hiked in about 2.4 kilometers from where we parked. so significantly shorter than starting at the Lake Louise end. But this is it. This is the Great Divide. So here we are in that classic National Park architecture style. The giant beams or the giant tree trunks acting as beams. And there it is, the Great Divide shooting into the sun so it's kind of hard to see it but it's still here 25 years after the road was abandoned we've now crossed over the great divide so we have now entered alberta and there's an old road sign there although i guess it still serves a function for the people hiking the trail to tell you you've now left yoho national park and you have entered Banff. So to get you a nicer look from this side there, you can see it says Alberta, even though you're crossing into BC. And I don't know if you'll be able to read that there with the way the sun is, but it says elevation is 5,332 feet. Great divide. And then you come on to this side and this pillar tells you that it's the kicking horse pass and shows that you're standing on the Alberta side so I don't know how long this has been here but I have seen photos from you know dating back to the 1950s of cars here um, I'm assuming given just the size of the logs that they used that these would still be original to that era or to when it was first built. I don't know if it's been replaced at some point in its lifetime. It's not much of a clue, but the fact that the elevation is only listed in feet, there is no mention of meters, would indicate that, you know, this predates the metric system in Canada. So that doesn't, like I said, that doesn't really give us much of a clue because that only takes you back to the 1970s. But what a great piece of architecture and you can just imagine the cars traveling the trans canada climbing the kicking horse pass and then passing through this archway or whatever you want to call it passing through here and entering british columbia it's a great piece of roadside history there's emily there for scale on this side british and again, the elevation, great divide, and then kicking horse pass and Columbia on this side. So going from memory, I haven't seen the photo for a few years. My car was parked right about there when I took the photo or had the photo taken more accurately. Since I'm in the photo, I didn't take it, but there i've been wanting to come here for a long time to revisit this spot and it's there it's still here it's just a little harder to get to than the days when i could just drive drive in here and and park and speaking of parking this is also really cool you can see that archway on google maps from the satellite view i wasn't sure what else would still be here 
but all the old infrastructure is still here. So this whole curbside area here where vehicles could pull in and park. And you can actually still see the parking lines faintly in the pavement in some spots there when the sun hits it right. And uh, let's go take a look over here and see what, what we have. Now, like I said before, I don't know if you can park anywhere along the main road and still access this area or not. I guess you can here. Or actually, sorry, I thought that was a trail. That's just showing the path of the Continental Divide. There's the new highway. There's where we are. There's that lake where we showed you the train. And then there's the Continental Divide. This sign is still in really good shape. That looks newer than 25 years, I would say. You can see there used to be, probably used to have a little roof over here. You can see where the uh, little shield or shelter roof would have been at one point. And this is really cool. I'll bet you this dates back to the early days of the highway. This water fountain, water tap, well, whatever you want to call it, all made out of brick. And you know we got to try it. Yeah. No water anymore. But that would have been a welcome sight for people traveling the road back in the day. Go down this overgrown pathway here. One of the other things I remember from my last visit here over 25 years ago was that there was a great spot here where you could get right down beside the train tracks and see the trains. So I'm not sure if this is that path or not, but we're going to see. Oh, still some signs here. Here we go. East and west, or east is east and west is west. You can probably pause the video and read that there on your own. I'm not going to bother reading it all for you. But here we go. Here's some great information about surveying and how they used the Great Divide. This part of the province, the Great Divide, does form the border between Alberta and British Columbia. So it's not just an interesting geographic thing because of the way the waters flow, but because the, uh, like I said, it actually forms a political border as well. This obelisk here, yeah, it looks like it used to have some plaques here. Those are long since gone. There's another, another obelisk down here and this sign here too. So let's go take a look. So this is obviously an old survey marker. I don't think there's going to be anything. Oh, it does still have an engraving on this side. In honor of Sir James Hector geologist and explorer to the Palliser expedition of 1857 to 1860 by his friends in Canada, the United States and England, one of the earliest scientists to explore the Canadian Rocky Mountains. He discovered the Kicking Horse Pass through which the Canadian Pacific Railway now runs from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And this here, if I'm reading this correctly, erected in 19... 1966? I think those are sixes. It seems like a 1960s type monument, so very cool. And this is another view that I have photos of from that day I visited here. This one, you know, looking to the west. And then you got the train tracks here. 
good guy, May 26, 2018. I don't know, if you were really a good guy, I don't think you'd be spray painting rail cars. And then the look to the east. Beautiful spot to train watch if you're willing to walk in the, you know, slightly less than three kilometers to get here. This place is way cooler than I thought it would be. I mean, it was, yeah, like I just had very, you know, it was a very brief stop, pulled over, took the photo, grabbed some pictures of the train. Everything was done on film cameras at that time. So I only took three photos here at that time. Like I said, the train tracks and then the, uh, the sign or the archway. But yeah, a <laughs> very, very cool spot. And it's isolated enough that we've got the whole place to ourselves right now. Other than the wolf, the only other person we saw was that lady riding her bike that uh, got to the trailhead at the same time we did. And since then, we've been completely alone here. And I haven't shown you the whole thing yet, but here's a couple other. There was probably a sign or something here at one time. You can see the foundations of it in the concrete or in the pavement but let's go back up towards the road we'll show you what else is here I forgot we saw another interpretive sign as we were walking in on this little side trail just talking about this is Divide Creek, and it forks right on the boundary between the Pacific and Atlantic watersheds. The left fork goes to the Pacific, the right fork to the Atlantic. So, right in here, that's the right fork there, and this is the left fork here. Divide Creek. Some water will go one way, some will go the other, and very likely they shall never meet again. We did bring water for Mabel, but we're going to let her drink out of this mountain stream. It's so close to the source, it's probably safe. Plus, I'm pretty sure that dog has a cast iron stomach. It's probably the best water she'll ever taste in her life. All this infrastructure still here. These benches are here. Like, obviously, this was a very well-maintained area right up until the closure of the highways. Like Emily said, a lot of these signs seem to have a very 1990s look to them, so. Let's walk back down this way here, back towards where we came in. Again, another little bench here. What an amazing area. And here we go. We've got some abandoned, well, we got picnic tables. And this abandoned camp kitchen slash shelter there. And it's all just sitting here in the woods. I'm assuming they're not really maintaining it anymore, so I will feel safe in saying it's sitting here in the woods just rotting away. This picnic shelter is a little bit bigger than that one we explored very early on on the channel out in Kananaskis country. So I'm thinking this might date back, I'm going to guess into the 50s or 60s, whereas that one in Kananaskis was more from the 1930s, I believe. But, I mean, this was, you look at this, this wasn't painted all that long ago by the looks of it. The paint inside is certainly peeling. So again, I don't really think it's being actively maintained, but I think it was maintained not long before the highway was closed.
here's another one of these old water taps. I'm going to assume, yeah, same result as the last one. No water anymore. The outhouses are all boarded up. Emily just pointed out there's a pile of canvas behind the outhouse here. Not sure. Bamboo poles. I think somebody was probably uh, camping here at one point. Almost looks like a shelter of some sort. There's lots of grommets and things and those are fairly nice poles so not sure what that is. The fact that it got left behind means we know it wasn't Steve Wallace that was here. But I think we're going to grab a picnic table and take the backpack off and grab some water for ourselves now that the dog has drank. That was a really different and unique abandoned location. Maybe because I have memories of it when it was still an active location, it just kind of makes it a little bit more special. I'm not sure, but very cool spot. Great place if you wanted to do some train watching, bring a picnic, sit at one of the tables. They're still in decent shape. You could even have a... Uh, a little fire in the camp kitchen if you wanted a hot meal in the winter or something or just to warm it up like if uh, any geocachers are watching <laughs> be a pretty cool spot to host a uh, geocaching event a hike in hike out caching event something to think about somebody who's far more ambitious than i am so anyway unless there's anything horrible that happened like the truck got broken into at the trailhead not much to show you on the way back other than what we've already seen, so we'll see you in the next video. So that was, like I said, one of the more unique abandoned places. I think uh, maybe be because I, maybe be, 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 because, maybe be, be, oh, I can't say it.